Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. He came on into the world. He died for us. He rose from the dead. He went to heaven. He's coming again. So let not your heart be troubled. This is the good news we are bringing to you. So if you get somebody today, let them watch and listen to this program. And you will learn something. Because Jesus came to die for us so that it will be possible for us to live in the world successfully without sin. So be ready to hear what you're going to hear today. And God will use it to bless you and help you live a successful life on earth. Again, welcome to this program. Honey, please welcome our wonderful audience. Yes, welcome to the good news. The good news to you and your family that you are according to his word. Today is your day of remember, this is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice in it and be glad no matter what. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thanking you for loving us. We are thanking you for making that sacrifice, using your own very self to sacrifice for our sins. We appreciate you. We love you. We believe you. We trust you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Thanksgiving and adoration in the wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Today we have a topic yes, that is kind of a question or something for us actually to consider. How do you see God? Is God your bank or is he your father? So we're going to see the difference between a bank and a father. What does that mean to you? You see, in a bank, you have to have the money. You are the one who put in the money there that you will withdraw. The bank is not a place where there is money that you go to withdraw. You put the money there for you to withdraw. Again, a bank is a place that you have to trust at all times to make sure that the money is available. Your money is available when you come to take it. Say, for example, if you go to a bank now, say you're a multimillionaire, and you go to a bank and say, I want to withdraw $10 million now. They're not just going to tell you, okay, go to the cash register and get $10 million. Sometimes they don't have that money in there. They may tell you, come tomorrow or the next week, or you might give them advance notice before you even go and tell them that they want to withdraw that money. And again, you have to trust the bank. If you don't... You are short of money and you want to lend some money. You have to trust a bank for the loan to loan you that money. Though you may be banking with that bank for many years, 10 years, 20 years, 20 years, but they deny you the loan because you don't have what they call the collateral to get that money. So you have to trust the bank again that this bank I'm dealing with <laughs> will remain. Sometimes the bank will fall, declare bankruptcy, and just close. And as it is today in America, uh, they have the FIDC, the amount of money that you have, the bank can pay you back if they close. Yes. So if you have much more money than that, you are in trouble. Don't they give you what the, the, the nation guarantees that will pay you? Now, these are the problems with the bank. Like we said, the bank may fail. The bank may not have sufficient money in there. The bank may not be doing, may not be able to, the bank may deny you a loan because you don't have enough collateral. So this is, the, this is how a bank will treat you because it is man established and again because the bank has limitations. It has limits. It cannot go beyond its limits. So remember, we're asking you, who is God to you? Is God to you a bank or a father? So what is God to you, honey? Please, can you answer that question? <clears throat> God is my father because I've made his son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and my savior. Therefore, as the scripture says, he is my father. And actually, he says he's Abba, our true father, our source. 
God is our source, our unlimited provider. See, today we are bringing this wonderful good news to you to let you know that God is not just your provider. He's your source. Is he your father? Because when you take him as your father, you know that he has all that you need, all that you want, and all that you desire. He has all the power needed for you, for me. For those who have made Jesus Christ their Lord and their Savior, the Church of Christ, God has all the power needed in every area of our lives to conquer the enemy that has already been conquered, to put him where he belongs, to reign over all that he has put on this earth for us to reign over. God is my Father God. He's my El Shaddai. My I am that I am. Now you fill in the space. God is my I am. Is he your I am? He says, if you need help, I am. If you need health, I am. If you need money, I am. You might be doubtful. When you doubt, nothing will work. And because we have been taught wrong, religious Nonsense, all these years that has entered our mind and taken a stronghold. That is why he wants us to renew our mind with the word of God. If you read the Bible, you get to know who God is. And that is from Genesis to Revelation, he never changes. He's the God that cares and loves. He is love. So God is the one that has given us power, authority, and dominion. He's our only Father God. There is no other God beside him. So if you see him as God and not your Father, then you have to change your mindset because a president of a country have children. His children do not see him as president. And they go, president, I need uh, some money for this. No, they refer to him as father, daddy. So let God be your daddy. He is God of all creation, God of all universe, God of all. And he is your God, but he is your father. When you call him father, he pays attention. Just like a president, he might be in the meeting, but if his child runs into that meeting and goes to him and says, Daddy, he will forget everybody in that meeting room and pay attention to their child. That's how God is. Are you going to make him your father today? Is God going to be your daddy, your own Abba? See, when you, because we, now, I wouldn't even blame it on anybody. If you have been a Christian for a year, two years, maybe five years, now it's time for you to know who God is. He's not just God to you. He's not just God to me. He's my Abba Father. Because I know he loves me so much that he will not permit anything nor anyone to hurt me, to touch me, nor for me to lack. Whenever you have a problem issue in your life, that means you have no revelation of God as your father. So this is what we are reminding you today. Have God as your father. He loves you with everlasting love. Now, I'm not, all that I'm saying here is already in the Bible. <laughs> and a whole lot much more. When you know him as your father, who gave his only firstborn child to you, for you to be set apart, delivered from the kingdom of darkness, from the grip of the devil, and come into his own holy household. When you know this wonderful truth, how can you not call him father? Today, I thank you for who you are to me, for who you have made me to be. Today, I thank you 
that you gave me all things that you have created. You put them under my care. And you say, I take over them. I reign over them. You keep thanking God. That's why he said, thank me always. Because he says all things are already ours. Already he has given us all things. All things. And when God says all things, it is all things. We just have to change that mindset that says uh, he means it this way, not this way. But no, tell the devil to shut up. Tell religion to get out of your mind and renew your mind daily with this word of God. Yes. See, God wants you to trust him. <coughs> trust him like your father. Even if you don't have a good relationship with your earthly father, well, that's beside the point. Trust God because he is steadfast. He is loving. He is unchanging, unfailing. It does not matter what you're going through. God does not put any evil on you, nor tempt you, nor cause you to fall. No. Our Father is here for us, in us, with us, around us. He said he wraps us, he wraps himself around us. Oh, I mean, come on. What else do you want? This is how I, that's, that's how I see God. He is God of the universe. God of all might, all power, all provision, unlimited God. But he is my father. When I know my father that has created all these beautiful things and say enjoy. <laughs> we just need to take him seriously. And open our mouth and start saying, this world belongs to me. All things are mine. Sickness and disease, you have no place in my atmosphere. I refuse you. I command you, spirit of infirmity, sickness and disease, out. You have to use your mouth and command. And that's why God says, he, Jesus Christ, has come and given us this wonderful life. This is our heritage. When you open the Bible and hear the good news, you will know that this same God that is speaking this in the Bible is a love letter to you. The Bible is a love letter to you. To me, that's how I read the Bible. God has written this because we weren't there thousands of years ago. When this Bible was, uh, God moved in. Now, God is here. The same yesterday, today, and forever. This Bible is the evidence. He will never leave you nor forsake you. If you're going through anything today, know that it's not God that has brought it. It's the devil. Because you have opened your mind and allowed the devil to touch. Now, arise and shine. And say, devil, enough is enough. Today... I take my place. I am the beloved of the Lord. I can never be defeated. God is not only your father, he is your source again. What is a source? A source, you can have money in the bank, but your dad is the bank himself. He's not a banker, he is the bank. So you can bank your money in the, in the bank of the world, but God is your El Shaddai, your great provider. He is the source of all that you want, need, and desire. So, today we are letting you know God will never disappoint. He will never disappoint. Don't listen to the voice of the devil, doubt and fear. Don't listen to anything that will point you to look at the rear view mirror. Look at the back. Oh, look at this. No, tell the devil, shut up and get out. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. That is the authority that we have. The name that every knee bows to. Okay. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Um, what we are telling you here is this. How do you take God? You see, some people see God in relation to whether they sin or they don't sin. A God who is sitting in the boot, and you come from time to time to confess your sins and then go back 
and start all over again. Mm. When you sin again, then you come back and confess your sins and you go back. That's the only relationship they have with God. Now, take the example of the prodigal son. Did he sin? Yes. He came back to confess his sins. The father was not interested. The father was only interested that I have all this abundance. I have all these riches. And my son is not enjoying it. I want my son to come back and enjoy that which I have. That's how God wants you. Come back to your father. He has all that pertains to life and godliness for you. See him not as, like my wife said here, not as the president of the United States or the prime minister of England. But see him as daddy. Remember Jesus Christ on earth, what, what made him kill him? He said, God is my father. He's my father. I think the, the time Jesus actually called God his father, his God, I think two times what he said, when he rose from the dead, he said, I'm going to my God and your God, your father and my father. Then on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? But all the while, he was my father, my father, my father. And the Bible tells you that as he is, so are we in this world. Make God your father. See him as a father who loves you. Don't see him as the one who's sitting, like I said, in the boot, waiting for you to come and confess, then go back, make a mistake, come back and confess, then go back, make a mistake, come back. No. He said he will remember your sins no more. Your sins and iniquities he has taken away. Come to the, I said, as a new creation, he has created you in Christ Jesus in righteousness and true holiness. Have that righteous consciousness. Have that holiness consciousness. Have that beloved consciousness. And whatever thing you are going to do, know that God has given you the power and authority and ability to do it. Now, look at the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, we are told that the evil man, the Antichrist, will make images. And that he will give those images life and power. And they will be so powerful that they will be able to command people to be killed or be killed. Now, remember, the devil is a copycat. He simply copied what God has done. God made us his own images, his own likeness, and gave us power and authority. What are you doing with it? Those images that the Antichrist will do will be so powerful that they will hurt people. But the power and authority God gave us is not to hurt people, but to do good, to enjoy life. So use your own power and authority now. He has guaranteed you everything. Jesus gave us everything and he left. You are in charge. You decide. He said, on the last day, he will ask you, what decision did you make? Remember the, 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 the man who left, gave his uh, seven tal tal talents? He, didn't, he wasn't calling them on the phone. What are you doing with my talents? No, he led them. We don't know how long he stayed there. He only asked them, come and give account of what you did. And that's what the Bible tells us that in the last day, there's a last day when you'll be called to give an account. But right now, what are you doing? If you don't use it, you lose it. So begin, how do you do it? Begin now to confess and believe that my mind, my whole being is the center for God to operate. God is operating through me, in me, for his own glory and for his own power. And begin to exercise that authority and begin to expect that what you say will come to pass because the words you are speaking are not your words. They are the words of the Father. And those words are spirit and they are truth. So live a life knowing that God is not where you go and get things. No. He's infinite. All that he has is in the kingdom. And where is the kingdom? The kingdom is within you. And it tells you that, it tells you that out of you will flow rivers of living water. So you bring out what is in the kingdom from you. Declare, I am prosperous and prosperity will come. I am healthy and health will come. I am happy and happiness will emerge. You bring them out of you. They are not going to come to you. They, you bring them out of you because that's the power, the ability, the nature of God that you have. You have the nature of God. Use it. Honey, do you have anything to add on here, please? Yes. The scripture for today, we look at Luke chapter 15, verse 31. Throughout the Bible, God has made it known to all that call Jesus Christ their Lord and their Savior. You are my son, you are my daughter, and I am your father. 
Look at Luke, Luke 15, 31. And the father, see, father, he said, didn't say God. And the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. God has called us and said, since you have come to me, now I am your father. You are my child. Would you consider that in your heart today and throw away religious spirit that wants you to say God, 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 and not calling him your father? When you read, that's why we read the scriptures. The New Testament, when Jesus was walking the earth and when he left and gave us his authority, he says, all authority has been given to me. And he transferred all to us. Start seeing God as your father. Like my husband talked about the bank, natural bank, the earthly bank. The FDIC can cover your money, even if you have millions of dollars in the bank. They can cover up to a, a certain level. They will say, okay, for this account, I cover 250000 This account, two hundred. How about if you have $1 million in one account? You lose the rest. But in God... You are unlimited, just like your father. You have unlimited resources. Our father has given us all things. So let us begin to enjoy this wonderful father God. Because, remember, you say, how do I do this? Now begin by saying, Jesus loves me. And I know his father is my father. God is my father. I believe it in my heart. The more you say this, the more your mind will receive it and your heart will begin to rejoice and say, yes, he's your father. Because the Holy Spirit, as long as you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit inside you will prompt you day and night, even while you're sleeping. When you wake up, say, Father, my true Father, thank you for bringing me to this new day, this new month, this new year. I am a God. Now, that's what you need to be doing. Know when the Holy Spirit is prompting you and say what, you, God, what God wants you to say. God, our Father, wants you to say, Father, thank you. Thank you for sending your love for me. Thank you for sending me, Christ Jesus. Thank you for bringing me into this new month, into this new year into 2023 and forward. Thank you, Father. For my children, thank you. For my marriage, thank you. For everything, the air that you breathe. Do you know a lot of people die from food poison? Even from um, polluted air, water. But look at you. Look at us. God keeps us as long as we know we are all his. Because he said he's all that we got. And we say amen to that. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for being all for us. Today, receive this wonderful Lord. So, if Jesus is not your Lord yet, for those of us who are speaking this thing here, this is for those who believe, receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior yet, accept him. It's very simple. And that is why people neglect it well. They say, what we obtain cheaply, we esteem too lightly. Salvation is, we just, well, you mean if I just say Jesus Christ is my Lord, come into my heart and that's it? That's all is required. So just do it. If you are not born again, just say now, repeat after me, dear Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I confess that he died for my sins. I believe that he died, he rose again. And today I receive him as my Lord and Savior. Father, I thank you for, because of this, you have made me your son. You are born again. That's all it takes. Is that it? Yes. God made it so simple so that you can accept it. Now, we are going to pray for you. Whether you, received, whether you are born again or not, right now we are praying for you. We say, Lord Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, these are your children whom you created for your own glory for your name's sake. Father, touch their lives. No, you have touched their lives. Make them realize that you have touched them. 
Get them to realize that you have given them all things that pertain to life and godliness. Let them realize that you have given them power over all the powers of the enemy. Sickness, lack, ignorance. That all they have to do is to call upon you and you stretch forth your hand and the power and nature of God in them will be released and they'll experience joy and gladness. Father, let them know the power of the Spirit of God in them and the power of the name of Jesus Christ. That name that all the angels in heaven bow. Principalities and powers tremble and every created thing bows at the name of the mention of that name. Father, let their lives be so today. Father, let them believe this truth and not doubt it. They are strong in knowing that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. Let them know that this is their time. The time for the Antichrist will come, but it has not come. So if they are suffering now in poverty or sickness, the enemy has encroached into their time because they are ignorant. Because you say, my children are perishing for lack of knowledge. Father, we thank you that today, that ignorance is gone away. That blindness is gone away. That darkness is gone away. They rise up now and know that the devil can do them nothing because they have the power and authority over him. Thank you, Father, for this is true now in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those that need to receive Amen. Jesus Christ today, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you came to earth, suffered, and died for me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins. I ask you, be the Lord of my life and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Here am I, Lord. Have your way in my life. As you said that today, now know that you have become a child of God. Receive your divine salvation. It is so unto you, as you have testified. With your mouth, as long as you believe it in your heart, you are a son of God today, a child of God. Begin to read the Bible and enjoy your Father God. Yes, praise and give thanks for God for the availability of everything for you. Everything you need is available. Yes. All you need is how do I get it? And it's simple. Speak it in your, through your mouth. Believe it in your heart. Do not doubt it. Rejoice that you have it. And that's all. Jesus Christ is lost. He loves you. Always. He loves you. And we love you. God bless you. <laughs>